my name is Emma, and something about me that is prevalent in all my social media accounts is that I am obsessed with my OCs. Like, extremely obsessed. <laughs> I've had these little boogers since I was 14, and they haven't left my head since. So it's overdue that I make a video about them. And believe me, this won't be the last. I knew I didn't want to do a video just explaining them, so I came up with a challenge to do also. I love watching people draw their characters or sonas in different styles, but was especially inspired by Jinja Ninja OWO's video on drawing their magical girls in different anime universes. I don't really watch anime, so I just picked a few shows and a movie, you'll see, <laughs> to draw my OCs in. I kind of treated this as a style challenge, as in recreating the show or movie's art style the best I could, but as you'll see, some I did alright and some I didn't even try. So let's jump into the most self-indulgent video to ever exist. <laughs> First one is me drawing them normally in my style, obviously. Like I said before, I've had these characters for a long time now, specifically Bella and Charlie. And look, I am by no means anyone on social media, but if you know my art, you know these two pop up all the time. <laughs> I won't go into their origins right now as in like what their characters were like when I created them. I might in the future, but these babies got some lore, let me tell you. <laughs> and yes, I do plan on doing a comic of some kind with them in the future, so I don't want to share everything, but I will give a little overview and a peek of their personalities. <clears throat> this story primarily focuses on Bella and Charlie and their journey in growing up. They've been friends since elementary school and live right next to each other. I really love their house design by the way. Also, if you struggle with backgrounds or architecture, I recommend using The Sims to create a reference to draw from. It's so helpful. When the story will start, they are in their last year of high school. And though Bella and Charlie have grown apart a bit, they are still always there for each other. There is, however, something else of note. Bella lives a double life. At night, she becomes a famous singer named Ophelia, and no one knows her identity, not even her best friends. She is super paranoid of anyone finding out and takes extra precaution to make sure no one knows. Miraculous ladybug, but awesome, am I right? <laughs> Charlie is a talented pianist in between friend groups and meets Gabe, who is looking to start a band. They become friends and group together. Their band that is called, insert name here, I still haven't decided a name. Mina plays the drums and Gabe is a singer. Bella is aware that they have started a band, but is cautious around them in fear of being caught as Ophelia. There are two others in the band that I didn't include here, but look, I almost died doing this challenge. I didn't need to add two more to the lineup, but they are important too, and we'll get some spotlight eventually. <laughs> Over time, Charlie's band does get a following of sorts and gets signed to a record label. What record label, you ask? The same as Bella's. Bella thinks, it's okay, it's not like we have to interact, it's fine, until her manager tells her who the opener will be for her next tour. Charlie's band. So now, not only is Bella going to be in close proximity to her friends as Ophelia, she has to see, interact, and travel with them on a daily. And that's all I'm gonna share for the moment. That's pretty much the build, uh, not build up, but start to the story, I would say. I don't have it all laid out, but that's, that information is pretty much concrete. It probably won't change that much. I know that was kind of a lot of info, I still have a lot to sort out with the rest of the story, but I will tell you more about them as individuals. Charlie is a mellow guy from New York. He is an introvert who can be very stubborn at times. He's not in a relationship, but has an eye for someone. Ha. He has trouble sleeping and does not like being the center of attention, which obviously becomes a problem with his job. Bella is a shy, timid person, though around people she trusts, she can be quite lively. She often likes to be alone and enjoys her privacy. 
Hopeless Romantic would also describe her perfectly. She doesn't have a lot of friends until Charlie starts his band and she meets Mina. I didn't mention this before, but Bella is homeschooled, so she is pretty isolated, but the isolation kind of protects her because she doesn't have a lot of interaction with a ton of people. As Ophelia, she tries to be mysterious as possible and often avoids interviews. Most of the time, I treat Bella and Ophelia as two different characters because they are pretty different, but for this video, I'm just gonna group them together. Gabe is a happy-go-lucky kind of guy, very airheaded and outgoing. He places a lot of trust in people and can often get hurt doing so. Gabe is the frontman of the band and he really enjoys the spotlight. Mina is someone who may be off-putting at first because she really doesn't put up with BS, but once you get to know her, she is really caring. She has no filter and is really honest, so she butts head with a lot of people. She is definitely an omnivert, but more prefers to be alone because she believes that she can handle things by herself. And there's a bit of insight into my babies. I hope you didn't get bored too bad so we can move on to the next style. Nee, 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 nee. I think I partially chose this because I wanted an excuse to assign dog breeds to them. And blue is still kind of relevant, though it's fallen off a bit. I swear for months it's all I would see in my feed and now it feels like no one's talking about bluey. I mean, I'm sure they are, I just don't see them. They're not like in my for you page. But honestly, this show is really cute and I do enjoy watching it. MLP to bluey pipeline, am I right? Also. Note, do not bully me. I know this video is kind of cringe. Then let me riddle you this. If cringe bad, then why fun? And I'll let you think about that. That's your homework for tonight. I would like it on my desk in the morning. Thank you. So for Charlie, I made him a Jack Russell because I think it fit his vibe. I just went off the look of the dog, not personalities, the breed, so it's not that deep. Bella is a Cocker Spaniel because her ears kind of match their hair. Mina is a Husky, which I really struggled on picking a dog breed for her. I don't know, I'm just, I'm not totally sold on Husky, but I was also trying to find proper references, and Bluey hasn't made a character for every single dog breed. It was kind of slim pickings. Gabe is a Poodle which I had to guess how they would do a fully fluffy poodle. There is a pink poodle family, but I knew I didn't want to style him like that, but I think he turned out cute and hopefully kind of accurate. Remember when everyone was making bluey redesigns and I'm guessing they were minors and they would just get obliterated in the comments. Like the art community is vicious. Like, especially on TikTok, they, they're, they're out for blood. They, they will destroy your life. <laughs> I was originally going to have them be in flat colors, like the show, like how they animate the show, but oh no, 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 no. I had to make this, I couldn't just do a simple little style. I had to, I had to do the most. I, I hate myself sometimes. I tried to replicate the style of some scenes they have where it's hyper detailed to emphasize a moment just because I think it's so pretty and I at least wanted to give it a shot. I don't know how much it actually looks like that, but I tried. I don't know. If they were in the Bluey universe, I think they'd probably be teenagers, though there isn't a lot of teenagers in the show. Most likely background characters or something. I don't have a lot of lore for this one. You gotta wait for the lore at the end. Kids, would you step outside for a second? <gasps> this was another one where I really wanted to try to replicate the style as close as possible, just because it's so iconic. I thought it would be relatively simple, but it was challenging for sure. It's always the simplistic styles that get you because one thing is off and it's it just looks wrong. It was funny because when I was planning on making this video, I came across another video titled The Simpsons No-No Sheets by Kid Leaves Stoop. 
which basically explains the long list of rules that The Simpsons follow to keep consistency. And it proved to be pretty helpful because there are definitely mistakes I would have made had I not seen that video before starting this project. One thing that stood out to me was that the Simpsons family, they're not allowed to look evil or demonic because they do things impulsively and without forethought, meaning they do cruel things but they don't plan to. And that's something that I had never thought about before, but looking back at the hours of Simpsons I've watched, I couldn't think of them making those expressions. And it's crazy how many little details are just overlooked and they're like hyper intentional. And until somebody points them out, you're never really aware of it. My designs are really straightforward. I mostly reference clothing and faces, trying to simplify my characters, outfits enough to where they're recognizable but can fit in the universe. I think I struck a pretty good balance. They'd probably just be some background characters again in this universe. There isn't a ton of teenagers in The Simpsons either, but they really couldn't be anything else. Here's how they turned out. I think the line art might have been a little off, but I'm a bit out of practice with clean line art because I don't really prefer it, so, you know. And lastly, the one in this group that sticks out like a sore thumb. <laughs> The new me! Uh, first things first. We need to get you out of those cloaks. <gasps> Listen, when you think about it, Shrek's universe is hella interesting. Let me explain. This is a self aware medieval land where fairy tales coexist with one another and interact. Modern things exist but are modified to fit in the world, and it parodies pop culture in a way that doesn't completely take you out of it. I rarely see anyone discuss these elements of the films, and now that we've gone from an ironic enjoyment of Shrek to a more unironic way of enjoying it, I had to include it in this list. Also, side note, kind of spoilers, but the movie has been out for a long time now. The ending of Puss in Boots though, oh. Now this is where we get into the lore. You may be thinking to yourself, isn't this just a fairy tale AU with your characters? It doesn't need to be Shrek. And that's where you're wrong, my friend. My favorite and the best Shrek movie, Fight Me, I Will Die on This Hill, is Shrek and if you love that movie as much as I do, I do not need to explain why. This movie introduced, in my opinion, one of the best Shrek villains in the series, or two if you count her son. So she has quite a weight on the story and AU because it, it primarily takes place in the Shrek 2 kind of era, I guess. So I guess technically it's Shrek 2 AU. I've, I've put way too much thought into this, but I don't care. I'm embracing my cringe right now. This is hard for me. <laughs> Charlie is a knight who runs a company similar to the fairy godmother in that he creates happy endings for people, but not in the way that she does. He believes in not using magic or potions to create their happy endings, instead having a fleet of people to help others in succeeding in their lives. So he is the fairy godmother's biggest competitor, basically. Bella is a siren who wants to be a human and live on land, sort of mirroring the fairy tale of the Little Mermaid, but not exactly. I didn't, I didn't really want to pick fairy tales that were already established in the universe because I didn't want to step on any toes, but I let this one slide because there isn't really an Ariel in the Shrek universe that is an actual character and not just like a one-time gag, so I, I think it's okay. She would be distressed, similar to how Fiona was when the fairy godmother visited her in the movie and offers her a happy ending to be a human. Of course, this is with a cost because fairy godmother. I think that the fairy godmother probably preys on vulnerability to get what she wants out of people in disguise of wanting to help them. And it's shown in the movie that she does do that, so I wanted to basically explore that a little bit. Bella gets turned into a human and can stay human with the condition of she needs to find her true love's kiss by midnight, of course. 
Midnight? Why is it always midnight? There's also a catch with this in that if she doesn't if she doesn't find her true love by then, the fairy godmother will basically own her and her magic. So she will basically be in cahoots with her. It isn't until she meets Gabe that she realizes this because Gabe has made a deal with the fairy godmother as well. Gabe is the beast from Beauty and the Beast and remains a beast because his true love turned out not to be his true love after all. <laughs> he still longs to find her but has a hard time because everyone's off put by, you know, him being a beast. <laughs> With the help of her new friend, they go to the fairy godmother's factory to try to put a stop to this. And getting into the fairy godmother's factory, they meet the receptionist who is Mina. Mina, in this universe, is a fairy who works for the fairy godmother. Similar to Jerome in the movie, and she is just done with life and that job. <laughs> they realize there isn't much they can do to stop her except maybe sabotage her reputation. So they seek out a more powerful person to get on their side. That person is Charlie, who so happens to be somebody's true love. Wink, wink. So you know the rest. They defeat her and live happily ever after. Smooch, smooch. I love my totally platonic OCs. They are so cool. And I love them. They are so platonic and friends, and they are totally not secretly in love with each other. Wait, what would Bella and Charlie's ship name be? I feel like ship names are not a thing anymore. Blar- Blarly? <laughs> oh my god, I can't come up with one. Okay, whatever. Hey, if anyone sees this video, come up with a ship name for Bella and Charlie, I wanna know. And here they are. I'm not gonna lie. This was the hardest one because I'm not used to drawing armor or furries or mermaids, so forgive me if they're a little weird looking. <laughs> Here they are all together. Sorry if this was kind of a weird video. I didn't want to dedicate a whole video to just explaining my characters. I kind of wanted to treat this as a soft launch for them or something, uh, just to see how it goes. Um, if you made it this far, um, I just wanted to thank you guys. I got monetized on this channel and I'm really excited. Um, I want to thank you all for the support on the redesign video. It's really amazing. I just got a new microphone, so I hope the audio is better. And yeah, if you like this video, like, subscribe, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button. And as always, peace.